Today, we're looking at directory traversal attacks, something that you definitely need to understand and test for during your web app pen tests or bug bounty activities. As usual, we'll cover a little bit of theory before diving into some hands-on labs, and if you're new here and enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let's dive in. So what exactly is a directory traversal or path traversal attack? Well, this type of attack essentially involves us exploiting insufficient validation or sanitization of user supplied file names, allowing us to access files that we shouldn't be able to. Usually during this attack, we can use special characters like dot dot slash, which basically signifies move up a directory. And this lets us manipulate an application's file processing operations to be able to access, read, and sometimes write files elsewhere in the application's directory structure. Occasionally, we can also read and write files outside the web root, so elsewhere in the file system. The attack itself is fairly straightforward, though sometimes can be tricky to find and exploit in more complex applications. But since we have the basic theory out of the way, let's take a look at some labs. All right, so let's take a look at this lab and we have file path traversal simple case. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on my proxy, which is running on 8080. And then I'm just going to cache refresh the page. So hold shift and click refresh. And then come over and make sure that we see traffic coming through, which we do. So that's all good. And next up, what I'm actually going to do is change the filter. So by default, you can see that we're filtering CSS, images, and other binaries. And so I want to tick these so that I can see everything coming through and then hit apply. And already you can see that actually there's quite a lot of traffic that we're missing out on by default. So this isn't a great default setup in my opinion, but we can see that we have file name equals 5.jpg and file name equals 59.jpg. And this kind of warrants further investigation for path traversal since we can see in the ORI that it's taking our inputs or input that we have some control over to fetch the images. So let's hit control R to send this to repeater or you can right click and click send to repeater. Come over to here, just gonna close the inspector. And because I have the resolution set a little bit bigger to make this easier for you to see, we have the request and response in different tabs, although usually it's kind of split down the middle or split horizontally. So I'm just gonna send a request and then come to the response. And what I like to do is I like to make notes of the uh, content length so that I can compare this to future requests. So I just keep 181. 931 in my head and also we get 200 okay as well so getting an idea of what the application looks like normally is going to help you find things that are weird or strange behavior which might point to vulnerabilities so i'm going to come back here and i'm just going to try dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash and i usually put about five in because most web servers are in something like bar dub 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 html maybe there's a folder called my web application and then it's in there. So usually we go down about five or six directories to get to the root directory. And then instead of going 59.jpg, I'm just gonna try and access etc passwd. And on Windows hosts, you can look at boots.ini because that's always there and always readable. And etc passwd is always on Linux machines and it's always world readable. So I'm just gonna click send and then we get a response. And then we come over and we get 200 OK and the content length is different. And as you can see, we have the contents of etc passwd. Now on a real life engagement, what I would do is I would look for sensitive files. So I might go dot dot slash like config.php or look for configuration files where I can steal credentials. Depending on how the web server is set up, I might go dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash and then home slash maybe one of the user accounts that we've enumerated from the etc passwd, and then do something like user.ssh idrsa and try and steal like an ssh key, for example, or if the web application is running as root slash root dot ssh and same again, idrsa and steal that key so that we can then log in as root. But this is a really simple case where obviously there's no filtering or no sanitization on the input here. And we can easily 
include files from the file system. Before we dive into the next lab, I wanted to share some resources with you. Many of you might already have these bookmarked, but you never know, you might find something new and useful. First up, we have payloads or other things. And if I'm testing an application, but my basic tests didn't return anything interesting, or I think the application is behaving a little bit weird and it's warranting further testing, I'll come over here to take a look and get some ideas of what other payloads or attack strategies might be available. Sometimes it's enough just to skim through and understand what kind of behavior the payloads are trying to elicit, and then that can lead to further test cases. If you want to study and improve your skills, then of course, getting hands-on with the Port Swigger Web Security Academy is a great place to start. But if you've done a lot of these labs and you feel like you're ready to move on to something a little bit more tricky or in depth, then definitely check out Pentester Lab. And with that, let's move on to our next lab. All right, here we are at our second lab. So I'm just gonna come back over to BEP Suite and come to the proxy and clear out our history so that we have a little bit more of a clean workspace to work with. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm just gonna refresh this and then I'm gonna come back. And then once again, we can see that we have file name equals 9.jpg, and this looks suspicious and warrants further investigation. When you're looking for directory traversal, it's also worth looking for data in the body and other places as well for this vulnerability, as it's not just the URI that can be vulnerable. So control R, come over to repeater, and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test a few different things. So start off with our basic tests, dot dot slash dot dot slash, etc passwd, hit send, and we get no such file. Now this gives us some indication as to the application behavior, but it doesn't actually tell us whether the application is vulnerable or not. But if I saw this on a real engagement, I would definitely still continue testing. So I'm gonna come back and then let's try something like URL encoding. So we can highlight this, right click, convert URL, and then URL encode all characters. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to replace the other characters with this as well. So if it's filtering out slashes, for example, or the pattern of dot dot slash, this might help us bypass that. So I'm gonna click send. And once again, we get no such file. So something else I would check is also double encoding. So I would encode this and then encode this again. and then grab this. And of course, if it is filtering out slashes, then this slash might be a problem, but I think we should be okay because it's probably just filtering out dot dot slash rather than forward slashes, but that's also something else to test is that we should also replace this, although not with those dots there. And we still get no file. So here we have to think about how might the application be filtering and this is much easier if we have access to the source code, but since we don't have access to the source code, we'll just keep trying different things. And something that I have seen once or twice before is filtering that's non-recursive. And this is especially true for cross-site scripting filters. So if I just bring up mousepad, when we have something like this, if the keyword script is filtered out, we can try and bypass it by doing things like this to make it so it's not an exact match. Or what we can do is inside the middle of script, we can write script again. So when the function that strips out script takes out this keyword, the rest of the payload comes together and gives us our script. So if this function isn't recursive, then we'll be able to bypass it. Obviously, if it is recursive, it will remove this script, then it will check again, and it will remove this script, and then we won't be able to get our cross-site scripting payload to execute. But let's try this in this case. So I'm just gonna do dot dot slash in the middle of this. So here it's gonna take out this middle dot dot slash hopefully and leave us with a dot dot slash that we need here. So I'm just gonna copy this. And then one, two, three, four, five should do. Click send. And here we have directory traversal. So we can see that we've included the etc passwd file once again. So that's it for today's video. Directory traversal is definitely something worth testing for and can easily wind up as a critical finding. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.